I'm going to talk about O2 oxygen or uh, lambda sensors in this video. Now this was going to be a uh, how to replace type video, but circumstances, as you'll see, have changed it into a uh, more generic uh, what, why, and how sort of overview. And I do think they're important. Uh, they're often overlooked as a serv service item. So I uh, wanted to put across these points. So firstly, uh, O2 sensors are a critical part of modern fuel injection systems. They're an exhaust side sensor which sits smack in the middle of the exhaust stream and uh, they monitor oxygen content, uh, feedback from which allows the ECU to know if the m motor is lean or rich at a given instant and uh, so then properly tune the ongoing running of the engine. Um, there are also O2 sensors now downstream of the catalytic converter that basically serve to monitor the cat's health, uh, but for tune we mainly care about the upstream ones. And you'll typically have uh, one sensor per bank, um, so that's just one on a straight four like the uh, Ford Duratec that I have, but V engines would uh, mostly have a pair, one on each side. Now, problems with O2 sensors can be as obvious as a clear failure, uh, in which case looking at the sensor voltage with any OBD2 scan tool will show you just a flat line um, at zero, typically. And um, usually the check engine light would come on and there will be a fairly unambiguous error code. And uh, with multi-bank engines, of course, you'd need to pay attention to which sensor you were looking at, as one could be working and the other could have died. Uh, and it could still be a wiring problem, of course, so don't necessarily assume that the sensor is dead if it just went dark spontaneously. Uh, usually they don't just fail completely like that. So if you have uh, other symptoms like uh, poor tune or bad fuel economy, uh, you can still use a cheap scan tool to check the sensor's operation quite easily. Uh, and by the way, do this only when the engine is properly hot. The, the O2 sensor needs to be warmed up nice and cozy. Uh, you can see here the coolant temperature is up near 100 degrees Celsius, which is a good indication of that. Uh, firstly, monitor the sensor's voltage waveform at idle, and uh, just check that it oscillates back and forth as shown. And the switchovers should be quick, and their amplitude should be nearly to the limits of the range. And this is how the system works, and the fuel management sends the mixture alternately rich and lean in order to be constantly sort of zeroing in on its current optimum, so to speak. So you want to see these excited up and down oscillations. Um, secondly, uh, check the sensor's reaction to deliberate changes in air and fuel. Now you can do that by uh, watching the voltage as you remove a vacuum hose downstream of the throttle body uh, in order to introduce an air leak. And this will give the engine unmetered oxygen and make the exhaust go lean, so the sensor's waveform should immediately bias low. And conversely, uh, you can either spray some gas ideally into the intake to add unmetered fuel, or as a stopgap, uh, you can just blip the throttle quickly, uh, which should see the air-fuel mix go rich, and the sensor should immediately bias high. Um, although this isn't as obvious as you can see here, but you can see that the O2, the O2 voltage is spiking higher, which is um, what we would expect. Now, be wary also of misinterpreting out of normal uh, sensor results as a failed or uh, dying sensor. Often the sensor is just doing its job properly and reporting on some other problem. So, uh, with that said, um, sensors do coke up with exhaust crud over the years and they can slowly get what's called uh, lazy. As a result, specialists will tell you that they should be considered sort of service items and therefore replaced at set intervals, uh, depending on the type. Uh, you're looking at in the order of 100 to 150,000 kilometers. Um, and in my case, my car's mileage is at about the latter. So I decided to replace it and see what difference it made. Now, the old sensor was by no means bad, but it did seem a little bit slow in its oscillations and also prone to reading lean on occasion. And I confirmed this sort of by doing uh, demo drives before and after and recording the scan tool telemetry. And uh, I'm going to publish this in a separate video as it's too long to include it all here. 
but it'll um, at least uh, let you see what a, a new known good sensor should look like across a range of different driving conditions. Now, if you decide you want to replace your sensor, uh, first you need a replacement, obviously. So a uh, OEM product like this uh, Ford Motorcraft um, will guarantee compatibility, uh, but you can get generic ones also. Uh, then you'll need a special tool to undo it from the exhaust manifold, as you can't just stick a normal socket on because of the cable getting in the way. Uh, so you can buy off eBay and Amazon the likes of this thing for about 10 bucks. They're quite cheap. Uh, what it is is a deep socket with a slot cut in it uh, intended to allow the cable to clear. And then it has a, another hex and also a th this is a um, 3 8 square socket for your bar or ratchet. The problem with these tools, and especially these cheap Chinese ones, which are probably just made out of mild steel, is that the lack of a complete surround um, at the uh, hex means that they're very weak. So if the sensor requires a lot of torque to remove, the tool can start to flex and then open up, uh, which is what happened to me, as I'll discuss in a minute. Uh, you can see inside here the marks where it's shifted around the O2 sensor hex as I've tried to turn it. It actually ended up jamming a few times and I had to knock it loose in order to get it off. Um, so these are really not very good if, you, um, if, you have a, if you're going to have problems removing it. And that segues into my little misadventure. Now, normally you would find the sensor on your exhaust manifold and make sure that you have the space and the right tools in order to get a breaker bar on it. Um, the usual suggestion is to try this, by the way, with the engine warm but not hot. Uh, from stone cold, you'd want to run the motor for a few minutes to warm up the exhaust manifold in the hope of making the sensor easier to turn. Uh, but you need to be careful not to let it get too hot. Now, obviously the exhaust manifold will burn you if you touch it uh, and the sensor will be hot too. Uh, here I'm just touching the heat shield just to check that it's not dangerously hot. And you'd uh, disconnect the battery negative uh, both because you're unplugging an electrical sensor but also because on this Ford it's the easiest way to drain the ECU's keep alive memory and uh, you want the engine relearning its tune from scratch with the new sensor installed and then you would disconnect the sensor plug from its socket uh, as this is going to twist as you turn the sensor obviously and then you can uh, get your O2 socket tool in place with the wire cleared through the slot and then put the uh, put a breaker bar on it and give it a go now in my case this is all a bit of a lead up to say that my old sensor was frozen solid in the manifold and I couldn't turn it now, this doesn't appear to be uncommon, uh, what with rust in the exhaust manifold over time combined with all of the extreme hot to, uh, cold to hot cycles. Now, anyway, after trying a bit, I realized that I was just opening up the uh, socket tool like I explained a minute ago, and consequently was damaging the hex on the sensor. Um, I did try some penetrating oil on the threads as uh, best as I could and I don't like this because you get excess oil on the manifold which is hard to clean which then burns when you run the engine and it didn't work anyway and uh, since I didn't have the tools to go any further I took it to a shop. Now I realize that this is supposed to be a DIY video, mea culpa, uh, but I figure it's a useful thing for amateurs to know their limits and uh, in my case, the next thing to try was just better quality tools. The Chinese thing I was using was obviously not, not good enough. And ultimately, uh, gas heat may be needed to um, get specific localized um, heat into the exhaust manifold. Uh, not to mention taps or helicoils and the like, uh, depending on how bad it turned out to be. The most important thing at this point for me was to avoid doing any more damage to the sensor hex. So I had to give up. Now what you can do if you're willing to commit is cut the sensor wires and then use a proper 22mm deep socket hex uh, which won't suffer from the O2 tool drawbacks. And the shop tried this at first, uh, but we, we were cranking on it so hard with it still frozen solid that we were worried about the sensor snapping off at its hex, um, which would be the end of the manifold probably as it wouldn't be worth the time then trying to drill it out and fix it up. So what they ended up doing was removing the manifold entirely from the car 
and then uh, gas heat applied in, inside the exhaust as uh, well as outside was eventually sufficient and the what happened is the sensor threads eventually gave up the ghost so then the manifold threads uh, survived and they were cleaned up with a tap and then the new sensor went in okay so this is my old sensor here you can see the damage on the hex that I've done to it and uh, look at how messed up the threads are you can see why it was stuck um, also note the gray color of the exhaust particulate buildup um, this is kind of normal um, you can sometimes get a clue as to problems with the engine if the sensor is covered in some other stuff for example if they're black it's uh, a sign of either an over rich fuel mix or if it's a sort of uh, oily black then that would indicate an oil leak uh, or pure white can mean uh, silicone poisoning and you can also see things like antifreeze contamination from coolant leaks and so on uh, but yeah this one is basically good okay uh, that's about it um, I do recommend you have a look at my companion video uh, comparing the old to the new if you're interested um, there's only a small subtle difference in my case but it should make a small improvement in fuel economy so I'm glad I did it and uh, hopefully this was all helpful to you guys have fun <laughs>